The aim of this video, and series of videos in fact, is to shine a light on the enigmatic figure of Richard Hennigan, a priest, musician, academic, and Irish language activist. He was born on the 18th of September, 1863, in Mount Bolton, Port Law, County Watford, to a long and proud line of Royal Norman blood. He attended St. John's College, Watford, and later St. Patrick's College, Navy, on his path to becoming a priest. In 1892, he completed his studies and was ordained a priest in All Hallows College in Dublin. In subsequent years, he worked in Salford, Manchester, and later decided to pr pursue further studies in Christ, Sandon, Fyberg, where he received a PhD in philosophy. In 1898, he was appointed the Chair of the Irish and Celtic Studies in the Catholic University of America, Washington, D.C. He didn't remain in the position for long, however, and moved on to Berkeley University in California. He also became President of the Gate of Leave of America. For the entirety of his adult life, Father Henry was afflicted by tuberculosis and due partially to this, he returned to Ireland in 1903 and taught at St. John's College. In 1908, after the National University of Ireland had been established, Father Henry was made the first professor of Irish language in University College Cork. He also helped set up the Irish Language College in the Ringwood at Waterford in 1909. Ever a patriot, Father Richard Henry died on St. Patrick's Day in 1916. In 1905, he recorded 14 songs and 13 wax cylinders, two of which were recorded on the single cylinder, marking the first audio recordings of Irish traditional music. Similar to but predating vinyl, the music is etched onto cylinders of wax. Because the cylinders are composed of wax, they are easily damaged, and therefore the quality degrades after each play. If you are watching this video in order to answer question 5 on the Leaving Cert Music listening paper, the information on Richard Henry's life we have given so far should suffice. However, Henry was, as we all are, greater than the sum of all his parts. In spite of the fact that he was well respected, Henry was not, in all circles, well liked. He had numerous academic disputes with many public figures, including Project Pierce. However, he remained close to Captain Francis O'Neill, who was noted by his biographer to be the greatest individual influence on Irish dance speakers in the 20th century. Douglas Hyde, who would subsequently become the first president of Ireland, and Roger Casement, an Irish Republican activist. Henry himself was controversial and insolent. Speaking about Project Pierce's writing, or frivolous petulancy, he compared Pierce to more common people such as milliners, which Henry regarded as the ultimate insult. He loathed everyone and everything to do with the modern school of music, noting that the votaries of the cult had no knowledge of real music in the days of its power. He hated that modern music was, in his not so humble opinion, deliberately composed upon an artificially simplified tonal system. His appreciation, therefore, for the likes of Dead Mouse or Daft Punk would be non existent. He did remark, however, that the highest class of music would have free right of excursion and hence, to those who are judges in the case, irregular rhythm. It's no coincidence then that it was mostly Chanel songs, known for their trademark free rhythm, that make up the majority of the original wax cylinder recordings. Henry loved music for its inherent emotion, but he did accept the limitations of its powers. He once wrote, For though it can be conceded that the conclusions of reason are fairly adequately communicated to other intelligences through the medium of language and specifically in the form of logical propositions, yet to convey the language in the simplest of such formulae, as in the pure prediction I am, is forever beyond the power of music. In summation, although Henry as a person was at times disagreeable and his opinions on all things musical were stubborn and close-minded, he is well respected for a very distinct reason. His immeasurable contribution to the preservation of Irish music, which we will explore in more detail in the following videos of the Richard Henry series.